yeah, this this pickaxe is getting a lot of use here. It's just a little unbreaking one pickaxe, but it is doing so great. Wow, that was fast. Okay. <laughs> I just went from, uh, you know, taking a few seconds to just insta-mine. And it's like, okay, I didn't even get a chance to blink yet. <laughs> And of course, this thing also has Fortune 3, which means all of the gravel? Oh, yeah. The gravel is definitely, definitely not a problem. Matter of fact, most of it's getting turned into flint. Yeah, I think I'm good on the gravel department. Yep, plenty of resources. Oh gosh, uh, my brain is struggling to try and think about what to discuss. Um, I could discuss my campaign, my D and D campaign, uh, where I'm currently. Uh, playing a, a rather powerful wizard. I just realized I didn't get any gravel from that. It was all <laughs> consumed by the uh, by the shovel and turned into flint. <laughs> That's the power of uh, of upgrading your tools is you can end up reaching a point where it seems like it's pretty much hundred percent success rate. campaign surprisingly does not have much to talk about uh, like there is stuff I can talk about but the majority of it is stuff that has yet to happen um, I have plenty of content planned for the campaign I've just yet to get a chance to utilize any of it because my players are just taking forever to explore anything uh, I have a few plans for what I can do to entice my monk player uh, to potentially get more emotionally invested in their character because they don't seem to be very 
uh, excited to have their character be, well, their character. Uh, they, they don't seem to be very enthusiastic about everything. And I'm looking for a way to get them a little more excited, a little more into character. Uh, really bring the campaign to life for them. Uh, you know, as any, as any good GM should. The problem is, he did not give me very much to work with. <laughs> Okay. Um, he gave me a monk that has the criminal background as an enforcer. However, his character is on this whole redemption arc type thing. And it's like, well, the reason that he's on his whole redemption arc, like his primary path for his redemption arc is that he will be uh, he will be basically uh, making peace with the type of person that he was previously type of situation it's kind of difficult to put into words while actively performing other tasks. Uh, in my case, I was scanning for ores just now. I also need to put away this cobblestone as well as making sure I refill this cobblestone. Yeah, see? I didn't even have enough. Okay, well. Um, where were we on the dirt? This one? Yep. Yeah, so we're about 15 barrels of dirt in. Uh, our super ultra good pickaxe is still waiting on repairs, or no? Wait. Did I just. No, there's our super ultra good pickaxe. It's one of the fortune pickaxes. Ah, uh, boy. That one's fortune one, that one's fortune one. I'm breaking three, I'm breaking two. That's what it was. I wanted to find a way to make it so that I had Unbreaking 3 prepared. I could use the Silk Touch pickaxe, but that could cause its own series of problems. Yeah, I think I will, actually. I think I'll just use my regular pickaxe for now. If I encounter anything that I can't practically instamine, then I'll be sure to switch to the iron pickaxe. In the meantime, Looks like I'm going mining with my my good pickaxes. Because they're all good pickaxes by this point, and I don't really feel like making more of them. Because, well, they're, they're all good pickaxes.
Wow, I made it almost all the way down here. Okay. Yeah. I guess I should have just kept going. I mean, it's a little slower than previously, but it works. Okay. Now I turn and turn again. Now I get to mine some iron with fortune on my stone pickaxe. And then I get to mine gold with fortune on my iron pickaxe. <laughs> Okay. I'm decently sure that I will need to attach a hopper to that blast furnace when I get back over there. Just in order to feed all of these lovely ores into the furnace. actually goes there, therefore that goes there, and then lantern. Okay. Back to mining. Yeah. Um, as you may have noticed, we are going to be getting a lot of ores we're going to be getting a lot of polished stones. We're going to be getting a lot of construction materials for down here. We're also going to be getting a lot of materials that are a little more valuable, a little more limited in resource. going to definitely want to look into upgrading our uh, upgrading our size of our base you know we're, we're going to want to make sure that we have enough of a base to actually make it worth having this much uh, planning go into our base. Oops. Stop doing that. Where'd that put it? It doesn't look like it was anywhere important. Okay. into site here. Now that we have placed in all of these blocks, we can actually go ahead and start planning 
out everything by using this little method here where we leave little tiny gaps just big enough for the lanterns good old carved pumpkin with a torch very reliable now we just continue our excavations now that we're all caught up to where we are mmm spooky Yeah, all of the various uh, segments up to this point have been very useful in making this entire build a very smooth transition. Uh, I don't need to worry about things as much because I prepared so much in advance that the uh, the benefits provided are vastly outweighing any potential issues that might have otherwise arisen. Lots and lots of really good ore up in this batch. And the best part is that uh, a lot of this, I believe, was unexplored chunks. Which means there will probably be a few spots where I'm able to very easily mine beneath bedrock uh, amidst all of this this mess, this chaos. Now I just continue my excavations. Uh, yeah. Uh, very recently, my players in my D&D &D campaign had to experience a... Well, I, I suppose first I should mention this is a great time to leave a like on the video, leave a comment, uh, make sure you're subscribed. Uh, really does help me out a lot, helps the channel a lot. Uh, yeah, th this is Blue64 with Blue Nexus Gaming. Yeah. That's going to be a fun one. I 
try to provide plenty of entertaining content. I have a Patreon page. If you want to check out my Patreon, maybe give me money, that'd be great. I'd use it to upgrade my recording situation. Uh, maybe get uh, Minecraft for Windows 10, as well as getting Windows 10. Uh, possibly. Possibly not. I don't know. It's Windows 10. But, uh, you know, I would, I would look into getting... Uh, Minecraft for PC because uh, if I can get Minecraft for PC as well as uh, getting the Java edition of Minecraft uh, that would be great however I think I would need to also agree to the uh, Java terms of service and get some sort of license from Java based on what I saw in the installation uh, stuff for Java uh, the installation terms for Java uh, they apparently updated their terms and now if you want to use it for commercial content such as uh, making Minecraft videos for example you need their commercial license and it's like well you know, that was part of one of your lures, is uh, all these people were making Minecraft videos, and it's built in Java, so everyone was getting Java, because Minecraft is awesome. You know? Um, and now, the only people who can make videos about Minecraft are people who also have this... Uh, this commercial license for Java. That's kind of rude, you know. Uh, otherwise, they'll just copyright strike your video and get enough of those on your channel. And I think they remove your advertising ability or something. I don't remember. But, you know, it sucks. <laughs> if, if they get enough of those on your video, it, it just it's not as good anymore, you know, because all of a sudden your video is just full of ads and people are like, well, I don't want to watch this, it's full of ads. It's like, well, I'm not the one putting them there. Um, a lot of the, uh, progress being made with uploading my videos is done through my phone, therefore I don't really have like all day to go making Minecraft videos. Like even if I switched the videos over to my laptop, my laptop would still be spending the majority of its time just uploading these videos and then removing the videos from its storage because it's not anywhere near as lenient in its storage. Uh, it's still struggling to manage to maintain enough storage to keep its defragmentation system happy. Um, however, I'm managing to keep it functional. Uh, I think I managed to figure out what was wrong with it uh, in a decent amount of time before things started going wrong. Uh, there are still a few things that are not proper with my system. However, for the, for the most part, the majority of my laptop seems to be perfectly functional. Okay. Now, if I really wanted to, like, get a lot 
of items and a lot of experience from those. Uh, I would set up a dedicated slime farm. Probably at each of these locations where it just funnels all of the slime together into one location where it just gathers the slimes to kill them with tridents. And then I can just hold a looting sword and that would actually give me all of the slime that I would ever need as well as plenty of experience because, you know, it's a slime farm by that point. Now that we've got that situation sorted, we can go ahead and gather this redstone dust. And then we just continue on down this way, making sure we keep our eyes on the ceiling as well as on the walls, checking for things like iron which can be mined with a stone pickaxe in addition to checking for things like more redstone dust which needs the iron pickaxe oh coal even nice we even got coal okay let's see what all we got here is this just going to be a coal vein, or is there going to be more ore tied to this entire deposit? Hard to tell. However, there is plenty of coal to pick up. <laughs> we are getting lots and lots of material here. We're doing very well for ourselves. Okay. And then we also want to excavate this redstone dust that's in the floor because we don't want to leave that behind. You know, this is the reason why you mine at Y equals 11, is because this is where you're going to find all of the various ore deposits. Now, yeah, if you're just mining at Y equals 11 the whole way in a little two by one tall area, then you're probably not going to find much. However, as you branch that area out, each area getting its own little, uh, you know, two by one, uh, the trick is to decorate that two by one. Meaning, you're going to want to carve out the ceiling, you're going to want to carve out the floor. Well, as you continue to carve all of this stuff out, you're going to quickly find that all of the ores that you thought you didn't find, well, they were just right beside you the whole time. You just didn't know because, well, you were one block away. The moment you left that one block away radius, you managed to find the ores because you dug out the ceiling because you were trying to decorate the place, you know? And because of that, you ended up with a situation like the one I'm in right now where I 
am trying to gather up all of these ores, but I keep finding, as I continue digging, that all of these ores are freaking everywhere. You know? They're freaking everywhere, man. I mean, this is at Y equals 5. This is the layer that I want to mine to when I'm digging for... Uh, for the bedrock layer, you know? Matter of fact, this could be that entrance. Um, maybe. No, I'll probably have it over at the main entrance. The long slope down, as it were. But it could, like, otherwise be the main entrance. Let's see. If I carved out... No, I'd have to step it back one more. Because I want to dodge the lantern. But in order to do that, I'd have to be here. Now I can seal it up underneath here. Uh, yeah. Oops. I wanted to do this. There we go. can fill this section in with polished andesite. I also can now realize just how absolutely full my inventory is, meaning I should go empty out my inventory because holy moly that's a lot of loot. in all of these lanterns since the whole area seems to be properly cleared out assuming I don't end up with some massive slime interfering Slap you to death. <laughs> Is it an effective weapon? No. Did I make it effective? Yes. By picking which opponent to use it on. <laughs> I picked an opponent that had almost no health to begin with. different ores. Ooh, this one will make a lot of nice stuff. And this one. Now I need to go over to the gravel, deposit my flint, 
deposit more flint because I had over a stack of flint. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. Uh, I need to deposit the diorite. I need to deposit the granite. Um, okay. Oh, I need to deposit the cobblestone. You'd think that one would have been more obvious. <laughs> On top of that... Boop. What did I just hear? Did I hear a wandering trader? I don't see a wandering trader anywhere. Ow, I stepped on the magma block. Uh, okay, well. Let's see. Emeralds, diamonds, uh, the slime. Yeah. Yeah, we can go ahead and process the slime, compress it into smaller form. Doot, 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 doot. Same for the block of redstone. We've got 20 blocks of redstone just carried on us in dust form. Uh, we have a block of raw gold as well as a block of iron. Uh, we have blocks of coal. Now we can go ahead and start placing in some of this stuff. Deposit the redstone dust, deposit the blocks of redstone, get all of that stuff nice and organized. Uh, I suppose I'm going to want one block of coal. Uh, now, if I put this in here, does this burn? No, it does not. Okay, well, I tried on that. Looks like you gotta burn these in their raw form. Okay, in that case, I'm going to work on a funnel. You know, uh, a hopper. I want... I want a storage chest. In order to get a storage chest, I shall go to my redstone components, which are stored all the way on the surface. Because despite the fact that I'm working down there, I've been keeping them in my base. I should definitely sleep before phantoms start spawning. Oops. Speaking of, how is the kelp farm? The kelp farm seems to be progressing. Can't say too much about it. It doesn't seem to be progressing too incredibly fast. <laughs> it's just progressing. Oh, I already have some hoppers. Okay. Well, I suppose for now that'll work. Uh, I will move the stack of chests down here with the iron, however. Uh, seeing as I don't want everything to fall apart.
Okay, well, that's good to know. I just finished doing that. Uh, I keep opening that one expecting to dump all my ores into the one at the end. Uh, let's see, I wanted these as well as these. Let's grab some of these, some of these, how are we looking? Not backed up yet, however I would assume it's definitely getting there. Uh, how much ore have we burned? A lot, okay. on this one. Okay. Now I can just go in grab a bunch of andesite and start filling it in. I definitely think that this is going to be a very nice looking Place by the time I'm done with it. If the results of the previous section that was built in a similar fashion is any gauge of, uh, of visual appeal. Probably need just all of my andesite. I don't even know if that'll be enough. And then after that, I need the diorite, but first I'll need to finish mining out above the andesite. It's gonna be a lot of work. It'll be worth it though. Place will look great. players have been up to in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, my players have managed to find themselves in, you know, I'm just going to say screw it and I'm going to tell this in the, uh, the storytelling perspective. Uh, 
the, the narrative perspective. Uh, the players have managed to find themselves in a uh, rather popular local town on the island of Lisketia. Lisketia being a relatively uh, new island uh, as far as islands go. The island is populated by a few lesser gods. Uh, the major gods are not all that inclined to fight over the rather uh, paltry territory that is Lasketia. Uh, the the town of uh, Melodia is where the adventurers find themselves. Um, if I call it Murdoch, uh, apologies, that is the original name that was given to the, uh, the map. Uh, however, seeing as part of the creative design of said map, is my own doing since I did build the map myself. I'm free to rename it. <laughs> um, I used free assets uh, that were publicly available to anyone who was looking for free assets. Uh, therefore, it's a perfectly legal uh, map and all that. In case anybody's wondering of such matters, uh, you know, it, it is a legit, uh, a legit, uh, unique creation of mine. I need pumpkins. Okay. Uh, the the party started off small with the uh, the deep gnome. Uh, wizard Jack Mist, uh, getting used to uh, the daylight as they, as the party camped beneath an open sky after a rather close call with a pack of werewolves, um, a. Uh, a traveling adventurer uh, managed to uh, to calm the werewolves uh, through negotiation, we shall call it. <laughs> they were barred. You can connect the dots yourself. You know where that goes. Uh, they, they soothed the, the kind spirits of the werewolves, uh, through song and action, and, uh, they managed to, uh, to calm the werewolves enough to, uh, the very least, uh, satiate their desire for, uh, harm. They, they were no longer seeking to harm anyone, which was fair enough. Um, they, 
uh, the adventurers did end up eventually uh, succeeding in actually fending off the werewolves. Uh, they managed to kick the werewolf itself into a bonfire, which it was not immune to the damage of, <laughs> because it was a bonfire and not a weapon. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was surprising, for sure. See, this is why I did the flooring first. Because now, as I excavate all of this, they'll just end up finding themselves completely unable to infest anything down here. into sight back in there we go trying to walk in a straight line and it just randomly decides that it wants to look at the ceiling. It's like, no, I don't want to look at the ceiling. I already have enough to excavate ahead of me. I don't need more. Hey, hey. to actually properly aggro the silverfish because I couldn't look around properly because of everything else that was going on with my screen and because I was complaining about my screen and being distracted I ended up not being able to take out the silverfish properly meaning the silverfish hid along and next thing I know I'll accidentally take out a part of the ground or a part of the ceiling. I don't want to take out a part of either one of those things. I just want to dig straight ahead. Anyways, uh, the party found themselves uh, departing from their camp to head into the ne nearby city, which they found themselves on the outskirts of. Uh, they found themselves in the town of Melodia. The 
adventurers decided to perform some light shopping, uh, possibly look into seeing what kinds of quests might need to be done, uh, various other things that adventurers might look into when trying to start off their adventure. Uh-huh. I thought it was more silverfish, but it was more items. Same difference, though. Don't want to leave the items behind. Got to collect all the items. Yep. Plenty of items to be had. This is going to be much nicer and much quicker once I get another four blocks carved out to my left, uh, which would be more towards the uh, negative 16, it looks like, is where the rail is going to end up. Looks like it's going to end up on negative 16z. However, the 